Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Len Shuldroth from East Lake in Hopkins, Michigan. I want to welcome you to my daily podcast. Uh, the current temperature is 76 degrees. The high today will be 83, the low 58. And the winds will be 10 to 20 miles per hour. Today is Monday, August the 30th. Again, the high is 83. It's going to be very nice today. Uh, the low tonight, 58. The current temperature is 76. And the winds are 10 to 20 miles per hour and it's Monday, August the 30th, and we are getting very close to the end of August. How time flies. Uh, we're going to talk this morning about the Gospel of Luke. We're going to talk about how Jesus is going to perform miracles. And one of the miracles he's going to perform is that a woman is going to touch Jesus and she's going to be healed from her flow of blood. So this is uh, He Touched Me, and I want to sing that song for you this morning. remember when you were saved I remember when I was saved I remember how 
the Spirit of God, use the word of my word of God in my heart to open me up, to convict me of my sin, and to cause me to come to him. And I knew that I was a sinner. I knew that I needed Jesus as my Savior. And I put my faith in Jesus. And I was born again and became a child of God. Jesus heals a woman and Jairus' daughter. Luke chapter 8, verses 40 to 45. Now when Jesus returned, the crowd welcomed him, for they were all waiting for him. He's been on the east side of the Sea of Galilee, and now he's come back to the west side of the Sea of Galilee, probably more towards Capernaum. And there came a man named Jairus, who was a ruler of the synagogue, and falling at Jesus' feet, he implored him to come to his house. For he had an only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she was dying. You see all the rich details that Luke gives us? He was an only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she was dying. And as Jesus went, the, peop as Jesus went, the people pressed around him. And there was a woman who had a discharge of blood, or a flow of blood, for 12 years. And though she had spent all her living on physicians, she could not be healed by anyone. Again, listen to Luke's rich detail. She had, a, she had a discharge of blood for 12 years. And though she had spent all of her living on physicians, she could not be helped by anyone. She came up behind, she came up behind him and touched the fringe of his garment. And immediately her discharge of blood ceased. And Jesus said, Who was it that touched me? And when all denied it, Peter said, Master, the crowd surround you and, and are pressing in on you. But Jesus said, Someone touched me, for I perceive that power has gone out from me. And when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling, and falling down before him, declared in the presence of all the people why she had touched him and how she had been immediately healed. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. And while he was still speaking, someone from the ruler's house came and said, Your daughter is dead. Do not trouble the teacher any more." But Jesus, on hearing this, answered him, Do not fear, only believe, and she will be well. <clears throat> and, when she, and when he came to the house, he allowed no one to enter with him except Peter and John and James, Peter, James, and John, and the father and mother of the child. And all were weeping and mourning for her. But he said, Do not weep, for she is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him, knowing that she was dead. But taking her by the hand, he called, crying, Child, arise. And her spirit returned, and she got up at once, and he directed that something should be given her to eat. And her parents were amazed, and he, and he charged them to tell no one what had happened. Here's some great miracles that Jesus did. I, I think that what I'm overwhelmed with as I read through the Gospel of Luke is all the times in which Jesus is performing miracles. <clears throat> Jesus is... Uh, raising the dead. Jesus is healing the sick. Jesus is casting out demons. And day by day and hour by hour, we are seeing manifested the fact that Jesus is the Son of God. That's part of the reason and the value of reading through the Gospels is that we read over and over and over again about the fact that Jesus is the Son of God. Uh, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. We need to read the Word of God and allow it to get into our hearts so that we will believe. And here are two significant miracles, and I want to continue to remind you of the rich detail. Luke the doctor gives us great detail about these miracles, and we can have great confidence that they are indeed the Word of God. Uh, the first miracle is the, the healing of the woman who had a, an issue or a flow of blood, it says that she had been uh, sick for 12 years, that she spent all her money going to physicians and they couldn't heal her. 
And yet she reached out in faith and she just touched Jesus, the hem of his garment, and she was healed immediately. I like the idea of immediately. Doctors never heal us immediately. Uh, my friend Dick Gordon has cancer and they're not healing his cancer immediately. Uh, it'll be months before he can be clear of all of his cancer. Is that right, Dick? It will be months before he will be healed. But Jesus, when he heals, it says that she was healed immediately. This issue of blood stopped. It was a hopeless situation. That's what Luke is trying to tell us. And yet she put her faith in Jesus and he healed her immediately. And the other situation <clears throat> is the the daughter of the synagogue ruler. Uh, I think it tells us his name, Jairus. Jairus was the ruler of the synagogue. He was a significant Jew in this city. And he came to Jesus because his, his uh, daughter was dying. I would tell you that he was desperate to find an answer. Even as we would be when we find ourselves in desperate situations. And so his daughter, who was uh, sick, very, very sick, um, and he comes to Jesus and asks him to heal, come to his house and heal his daughter. And they make their way to the house, and before she get there, gets there, a messenger comes and said, your daughter is dead. So what was hopeless became even more hopeless because we understand that Jesus can raise the sick, but can he, what can happen now that she is dead? We would say she's hopeless. And what's going to happen is that Jesus is mocked by the men that are there because Jesus says she's not dead, she just sleeps. And what he really meant was that he was going to bring her back from death to life. And it says this, And, but Jesus, on hearing the and answered him, Do not fear, only believe, and she will be well. And when he came into the house, he allowed no one to enter it except Peter, James, and John, and the father and mother of the child. And all were weeping and mourning for her, but he said, Do not weep, for she is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him, knowing that she was dead. But taking her by the hand and call and, and call out to her, saying, Child, arise. And her spirit returned, and she got up at once. And he directed that something should be given to her, and her parents were amazed. But he charged them not to tell one, tell to tell no one what had happened. And it says, and her spirit returned, and she got up at once. He raised her from the dead, and she got up at once. It sounds a lot like Lazarus and others that Jesus healed. The man who had the crippled man, he got up. Uh, Peter's mother-in-law, who was sick, and she got up at once, and she served them. Because when Jesus heals, he heals completely. He heals immediately. And it was evidence of the fact that this was a miracle from God of something that Jesus had done. Do you believe that Jesus can heal you? Do you believe that Jesus can answer your prayer? Do you believe that Jesus can uh, work miracles in your life. Now, I know that God's in control of everything, and we're hesitant to ask God for miracles. But you know, when I see the Bible, I see great invitations to come to Him. Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. For everyone who asks receives. And to him who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, the door will be opened. We're invited to God, by God, to come to Him, to Jesus Christ, and to ask him and seek him for miracles in our lives. So if you're facing some impossibilities, often we are. I challenge you to believe God and his word. To take, to respond to his invitation. To pray and to believe. And to ask God to work miracles in your life. Father, I thank you for a new day. A new week. A new day. A new opportunity for miracles. I pray that you would help us to put our faith in you and to trust in you today. I pray for all of those out here today who are facing uh, impossible situation. I thank you that the Bible says, and Jesus said, for with God, nothing is impossible. I pray for those in our family that are unsaved. It's not impossible for God to save those that seem impossible to save. 
Salvation is a miracle of God. We thank you for the example in the Bible of the Apostle Paul, who was Saul, and how this one who persecuted the church of God, that you saved him, that he met you on the road to Damascus, and you opened his eyes, and you helped him to see God. I pray that for those that we love and care about in our family who don't know you, we pray you work a miracle in their lives and save them. The greatest miracle that ever could be performed is the salvation of someone to come to Christ. And I pray for those that are facing physical problems today, impossibilities. I thank you, Lord, for my sister Sharon, who's facing cancer. I thank you, Lord, though it seemed impossible, she is still alive. And that you have allowed her to get through chemotherapy. And that she is still making progress. I pray, God, that you would help her to redeem every day and live it for you. I pray that you would help her to know you better. Of course, that's why you give us more days so that we can come to know you and to believe in you and trust in you, that we will be able to do what you have for us that day. And I pray for my sister Sharon, Lord, that you would give her rich days and full days, that she would get to know you better. And I pray for Aaron and Sophie and Butch, that you would help them to care for her. And Lord, I would pray that you would draw them near to yourself too. Give them faith in you to believe, I pray. I pray for my friend Dick Gordon that I mentioned. I pray that you would help him to battle cancer and give him the victory. I thank you, God, that you are able. You are able to, to heal Dick because you are Almighty God. And I know that Dick loves you and cares for you and he wants to serve you. And so, God, I pray you would give him more days that he might bring glory to you, that he would serve you with all of his heart, soul, mind, and strength. I pray for Steve and Angie Gordon. I pray for them as for Steve and Angie that you would lead them to a church. We need pastors that love you. We need men that will be pastors that will preach your word. I pray for Steve, Lord, that you would bring him to a place where he can have a fruitful ministry, I pray. Uh, thank you, God, for who you are. Thank you for your word. Thank you for this witness from the word of God, from the gospel of Luke, in great detail about who Jesus Christ is, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, may the Lord bless you, and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine down upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you, and may the Lord give you his peace today.